This restaurant is spreading its wings, going digital, and disrupting with delivery. Can Wingstop add some spice to your portfolio? Okay, what, what the heck just happened to the stock of Kramer Fave Wingstop? Monday night, the chicken wings and beer chain reported, and the next day, the stock got slammed. Losing nearly 4% of its value on a very good day for the market. But was the quarter actually bad? I got to tell you, when I go through the numbers, when I look at them, I like what I see. Wingstop delivered a small a top and bottom line beat. Co- companies domestic same store sales rising by 6.3%. Analysts didn't even expect it to do 4.4%. Meanwhile, management raised their full year earnings forecast. Sure, it okay, it wasn't a blowout. But there's no universe where those numbers are bad. What went wrong? I think part of it was bad timing. Wingstop had the misfortune reporting on the same day as a Texas Roadhouse, another restaurant chain that delivered disastrous numbers, poisoning the well for the whole group. At the same time, while the stocks pulled back hard uh, from its highs in the recent weeks, okay, so it's not that cheap uh, on an earnings basis. It, it's run dramatically over the past couple of years. I've been recommending Wingstop aggressively ever since we spoke to the CEO in February of 2017. Since then, it's given us a monster 136% gain. Maybe this pullback is the opportunity. Let's dig deeper with Charlie Morrison, the chairman and CEO of Wingstop, find out more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Mr. Morrison, welcome back to Mad Money. Good Thank to see you, you, Charlie. Have a seat. All right, Charlie, a lot of these analysts, I went through every single downgrade. It's like valuation, valuation, valuation. I saw the same thing only one other time in my career. When Pat Doyle became CEO of Domino's, stock was 11, then it doubled. Mm-hmm. They all said valuation too high. It went to 250 under him. Can't this company have a similar trajectory? I really believe we can. And I think it starts with our growth trajectory that you've seen already uh, over the past few years, the continued same store sales growth that we've seen, 14, soon to be 15 consecutive years of positive same store sales growth, growing our unit count by uh, anywhere from 10 to 12% each and every year. I think it has absolutely the opportunity for that kind of trajectory. Now, I know that some people are saying, well, wait a second, they are going to have rising construction costs, borrowing costs are gonna be higher for the franchisees. They can't maintain that growth. Is that really a factor? Not for us. Uh, Our restaurant uh, investment is quite small at $370,000. We've been able to maintain that average over the last five or six years. Our franchisees enjoy a great unit economic model, over $1.1 million in average unit volume, a $370,000 investment. That's a three to one sales to investment ratio. Um, They're going to continue investing as long as everything keeps cooking the way it is. But you have to tell our viewers that this is not a, a, a a rainbow pot of gold. It's not easy to get a franchise from you. You have to demonstrate a level of proficiency. Yeah, you sure do. And actually, about 80% of the franchises that we sell are to our existing franchisees today. And so they've locked up a lot of territory. There's still some available, but we love growing with them. But if you're going to come into the brand, we want you to be an experienced restaurant operator. Now, uh, one of the things that Pat Doyle did at Domino's was really emphasize technology. I thought that this quarter, you're talking about digital ordering, delivery. Those, oh, you also, of course, did international growth. You're talking about international growth. That's the game plan. It is the game plan. There are four key drivers. National advertising, as we've scaled our business, is a great opportunity Mm. to continue to generate brand awareness for the brand. When you look at digital delivery, both of those two things go hand in hand. We have a fully integrated, seamless process into our restaurants for digital orders to come in. Mm -hmm. Today, 25% of our restaurants, or 25% of our revenue, uh, comes from digital. And then from delivery, we've been testing it for a little over a year, as you know. Uh, We just announced that we're going to start the launch of delivery with Los Angeles coming up quickly, followed by Houston. Through 2019, we're going to continue to advance delivery to about 80% of our restaurant base by the end of the year. Now, uh, you have a partnership with DoorDash. You're very happy with them. We are very happy with them. We think DoorDash represents um, the best possible option for merchants like us to make sure that they take care of the logistics side of the equation. We've fully integrated our technology with them, and it's been a fantastic uh, process for our operators. Franchisees love it. And our customers, more importantly, really like the occasion. Okay, I love international. I think it's a great business. How's it going? Going great. Just today, Jim, we opened our first restaurant in London. It is. Right in Cambridge Circus with a line out the door. It's been fantastic. That's our 10th country. They got, I just came back from London. They got bad wings over there. Yeah, well, now not anymore. All They've right. Wing stop. So uh, <laughs> things are looking up. And uh, we're really excited about our international presence. Over 130 locations continuing to grow. We're going to continue to add two to three countries every other year. Build that foundation with solid infrastructure behind it so that we can continue to grow a long time into the future. Another thing you do, Charlie, that 
uh, Domino's did. You like to give special dividends to shareholders. You reward shareholders. We certainly do. We've uh, done that quite a few, two times since we've been a public company, <laughs> even prior to that. In fact, if you look at uh, Wingstop since we've been a public company, over a 200% total shareholder return, inclusive of the strength of the stock as well as the return of capital. Uh, natural voice recognition. We think voice is very important in technology. Obviously, you do too. We do. We do. We've been testing that already. Early stages right now. Uh, but what we see is the opportunity to digitize every transaction in Wingstop. No matter if you call, right. if you come in, right. or you use our web applications, we think we have that opportunity well into the future. Now, could you give me, um, you wrote, that you call it CRM in the, in the conference. Is that Salesforce or is it your own uh, customer relation? It actually is a third-party product that we're leveraging okay. to build the database. We're also investing in front-end technology, so we'll no longer use a third-party's product for our web and mobile web interfaces. Okay. We're investing our capital to build an infrastructure that we believe is going to be sustainable for delivery as well. So if you see my number, will mm -hmm. you know what I want? We will. We'll know that if you're a fan of lemon pepper and you haven't ordered any, Jim, we're going to serve up a message to you that says, hey, don't forget to add five more to your order. Oh, God, that is so good. How about the $15 package? How did that go then? Uh, uh, very much. well. It was the first time we've nationally promoted a bundled deal. Um, it happened at a perfect time for us where we had some softness in traffic. We restored traffic growth to the business this year in the third quarter. Now year to date, positive 6.7 year to date and same store sales with positive traffic. And went better each month was better. Absolutely. Each sequential month, even uh, throughout the third quarter, has been uh, stronger for us. And uh, the one last question. I don't know if you're the best judge of it because you have such an expensive but uh, great value. Where, where do you see the consumer right now? Strong? It seems very strong. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of drivers for the consumer to have more money in their pocket, uh, more opportunity for indulgent, wonderful occasions like Wingstop and go out and visit. And I think it's reflective in our uh, company's same store sales growth and overall performance. Well, I am so glad when you came on the show, I said, this guy's real. The numbers are real. Of course, I looked at the economics of owning one of them because it seemed like so good. It was too good to be true because I'm not already a franchisee. And I know you only want successful people to do it. That's why if you guys want one at home, you got to already have something good before you can get to these guys. That's Charlie Morrison, Chairman and CEO of Wingstop. I hope you see what I see in this company. I see lots of price work up. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.